Hi, a warm welcome um, to you, Baird College. My name's Carl Giles, and I am the Curriculum Manager for Public Services. My name's Sadie Adshead, and I'm a lecturer on the BTEC, uh, typically the BTEC Level 3 Public Services. Hi, my name is Steve Kelly, and I'm also one of the lecturers on the Public Services, and I span across uh, the majority of the Public Service courses that we offer. I'm Trish Hughes, I'm course lead for the Foundation Degree in Criminology at Hubert University Centre. Reach your goals by doing something you love. Service. Up your game and prove the doubt is wrong. Believe in yourself and achieve your potential. The career you want is waiting for you. The opportunities are here. The expertise are here. The support is here. The inspiration is here. Exits are located at the rear of the cabin and at the front of the cabin. Grow. Thrive. Innovate. Succeed. Wherever you want your story to take you. It starts at Hubert College. At UBIRT College, we pride ourselves on being a, an inclusive college, which means we have a, a suitable course for any individual with a keen interest in pursuing a career in public services. We offer a range of qualifications, and what I'd like to do is bring in one of our specialist tutors, Sadie, who's going to talk through the, the various courses and the various options we have available. Thanks, Carl. Um, okay, so. Um... As Carl said, we, we pride ourselves in our um, uniform public services department and actually we have a little motto and that is um, prepare to serve. Um, so we always take our initial aim as getting um, young people ready for a uniform career, whether it's military or whether it's police, uh, paramedics, prison service, fire service. Uh, you name it, if you want to be in uniform serving the public, our initial aim is to prepare you for that career. And if you take that as the first aim, then the academic side actually comes very easily um, because it doesn't matter whether we are um, putting you on a BTEC level one, where you have um, li little to no um, academic qualifications to co come on board our BTEC level one, whether it's the level two or the level three, where we're asking for um, typically um, for, for GCSEs that are around a grade four, um, including maths and English. It doesn't matter whether um, you have um, uh, the, the academic potential to go on to university or whether you're just looking at something to do to prepare you for that career. Um, we, we completely expect to get you 100% ready for your recruitment process um, with the units that we offer you. Um, so rather than taking um, the BTEC level one, two and three individually and boring you to tears with each and every unit that we offer, what I'll do is give you a little overview because um, the beauty of the BTEC here at Hugh Baird on the Uniform Services course is that um, whether it's level one, two or three, it's interlinked and um, multifaceted. So we, we tend to look at the, the same topics as we go on, depend, um, regardless of the academic level. So for example, um, we will begin by um, preparing each and every student with the roles and responsibilities of the uniform services, whether that's at level one, two or three. Um, if it's the lesser academic level, you'll be looking at career search, um, your personal skills and qualities, which role in the uniform services is going to be right for you, um, what you can bring to that role and what you can expect from a career in the public services. What does that public service environment look like for you? Um, what, will, what will be expected um, of you as a public servant? Uh, and we, we look at that in a variety of ways. We look at um, government roles and responsibilities towards the public and towards you as either a serving soldier, a serving police officer, a serving par a paramedic, um, whichever your, your chosen niche is, there will be something of very particular relevance uh, for you. Um, we also look at um, the physical fitness requirements on each level. 
and um, will tell you exactly what it is you need to be achieving. We don't expect you to be particularly fit when you arrive with us. Um, we have all kinds of levels. We have um, students that love to run already and go out and achieve that on their own. They're already gym members. And we have students who've literally never been for a run in their life. Um, the only thing that we ask um, as your tutors is that you you come to us with determination and absolute faith in yourself and and we'll do the rest basically and um, for example um day one week one you might have a bleep test which could sound scary um however it's not it doesn't matter to us if you if you shuttle run across the hall two times or 200 times the only thing we ask is the next time you do it that you you improve upon yourself so um, the physical side of things will be something that goes with you throughout your time at, at Hugh Baird, regardless of whether you're on level one, two or three. Um, we also look at, um, at, at the, the, the side um, from the, the, the points of view of the, of the different services. So if you're looking at the military, we have units that are very much specialized in the discipline of the military, for example, where we'll do things like um, foot drill, uh, which Trust me, even if you've never marched or saluted in your life, um, by the end of it, you will have enjoyed it so much that you will literally be marching up and down your bedrooms and practicing it at every opportunity. All of the students dread it initially, um, but by the time we've we've come to the end of our, um, our drill units, whether it's on a level one course or a level three, and we've had a parade and we've had someone coming in from the outside to inspect that parade, um, you, you will really take a lot of pride in your individual and team performance and things like drill. Um, we also look at things like um, the government policy, which can come across as a little bit dry. Um, however, um, I, I guarantee that by the end of the course, um, you will consider yourself a bit of a social scientist. Um, for example, if you look at the climate we're in at the moment, the fact that we're meeting um, on a video and not face to face, uh, we will be looking at the, the, the whys and we'll be delving into the situation, what, what's going on with the pandemic, what's going on with the government policy, um, what is the World Health Organization, how does that affect you as a citizen? And how does that affect you as a public servant? Um, each of the, the um, uniform services at the moment is playing um, a very important role if you delve into the current um, COVID-19 situation from the NHS, of course, a very obvious role, frontline, um, paramedics having to deal with um, this climate of fear as well as illness. Um, we look at um, the prison service. Um, very specific role at the moment with their lockdown procedures for the prisoners to the point where some prisoners have been released that the, the fear factor is so high um, and of course we look at possible military intervention with um, the civil unrest that's very current at the moment so you might think that government and the house of parliament and things like, like that democracy is very boring but trust me by the time you've had a little um, taster on our course your eyes will be wide open and you'll be really enjoying that we also look at um, the, more of the, the, the policing side of things and the criminology side of things. Um, for example, with units um, such as behavior, which um, we've just finished up actually this, this term on the, the BTEC level three, we look at criminal psychology. Um, how do the police profile who has committed a crime just by looking at a crime scene? Um, you might think it's impossible for the police to have a very good idea of who has committed this crime, why they've committed this crime, um, just from looking at a crime scene. But but we will look at that um, in depth on them and the, the behaviour unit. We also look at um, the way the uniformed services, police, um, army, navy, air force, fire service, para paramedics link up together in times of crisis in our planning and responding to major incidents units. And we'll try and make these as um, practical and as hands-on as possible. Um, for example, in the past, we've brought in specialist figures from outside to supervise and we'll have we'll carry out a big um, um, like a like a dry run of a scenario for I think in the past we've done school shooting um, we've done things like um, crime scene where we've given each student an individual role. You might be given the role of a police officer, you might be given the role of the, the head of the fire service, and you're asked to say evacuate a school or something like this. Um, and we, we will um, 
we'll, we'll assess you on how, how you cope under the pressures that we throw at you in a, like a live timeline and um it sounds a bit scary but it's actually not by the time you come to do your assessment you'll be more than ready for that um so you look at your communication um with um other services and how that links in um your your ongoing communication is of massive importance to us as well um whichever service you join at some point you will be um an instructor uh, whether you've been serving for um a year or 10 years you will always be instructing and teaching those that join um after you so we really do find it important to bring on your confidence and your public speaking skills um, your team building and um, the way the way in which you work together um, and we'll be testing this not only in the in the classroom based environment but we'll be getting out and about doing things out on the area camping um, going on expeditions where you'll be doing navigation and map reading and again this is regardless of whether you join us at level one level two or level three um, Timetable wise, you could expect to be obviously the situation is changing and we're thoroughly prepared for um, the situation to be t possibly virtual and online as well as if it returns to normal by September. But timetable wise, you could expect to be in college for around two and a half to three days per week. Um, if you haven't achieved your, this is for level three now, sorry, if you haven't achieved your um, four in maths or English, you'll continue to do that with us. That'll be timetabled in for you um, and you'll be supported to do that. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Uh, yes, um, at, at Hugh, Hugh Baird, we have um, uh, massive amounts of support for the, for our students um, in the area called the pod, which is located in the Balliol building. Um, any problems that arise for you, whether it's personally, academic, financially, um, we have um, absolutely excellent um, staff down in the pod to support you through any situations that might arise for you, um, whether it's to do with bursaries or um, personal financial situations, anything anything to do with your self-esteem, uh, depression, anxiety, all of these very, very common things that might affect you while you're studying with us, we can signpost you towards the pod. You also have a personal tutor um, that you will get to know um, very well, who works together with myself, Carl and Steve in the public services department, um, who and all of our doors will be open at any time for any problems that could arise. But your personal tutor will be your first um, port of call for any problems with not getting working on time or whether you're going through a period of illness or anything like this. And we're what we always say to you is so long as you communicate with us, we'll be able to um, help you to get through and achieve. Yeah, so um, just might pass you on to Steve now to talk about some of the more fun side of things. Steve? Uh, cheers, Sadie. Um, right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, why we stand out as one of the best uniform service providers. Okay, and this is simply because all of our emphasis is on the learning experience. Okay, we try to incorporate as many guest speakers, as many outside uh, different services, visits. We try to incorporate a lot of this, which is we are at Hubert College. We are not a recruitment tool for any one specific uniform service. We do have a lot of students that come to us with an idea of going into one uh, regiment or service. And then because we give you that much of an insight to different services, students come to say, oh, I didn't realize you could do that in that service, or oh, that's fantastic, I think I might want to change to this direction. Okay, so I just want to give you a little bit a little bit of an insight as to what courses, uh, what, what sort of um, enrichment activities we do, how many guest speakers, and what sort of tips you might encounter whilst you're on the uniform services. Okay, and this is across all levels, regardless of level one, level two, or level three, as Sadie said. Okay, one of the first trips that you will go on to uh, is an Army Insight course. Okay, this is not aimed at you going into the armed forces. This is used as a as, as a as a course to bring everyone together. Okay, it focus, focuses on leadership skills, it focuses on teamwork, and it also focuses on one of the major things that you'll come across in the uniform services is problem solving. Okay, and it gives you a good set of tools at the start to be able to tackle all of these things. Okay, another course that we do um, is working with Merseyside Police. We're quite lucky as a college, okay, because we get asked every year to go back and work with Merseyside Police in their um, police training academy up in St. Helens. 
Okay, it's a fantastic visit for every student. Every student, after they've been on it, want to do it again and again and again. Um, what we do in, in with the police is we do uh, role play and scenario. Okay, so this could be for new police officers that are coming coming through their training. It could be for old police officers that just have to do a refresher course. And that's looking at different scenarios that you might face uh, being a police officer, whether it could be um, violence at a, a football event or a, um, a stadium. It could be just general sort of uh, kids being um, up to mis mischief and no good and having to do it. Kids putting face masks on and there's a whole element. But the actual end, end of it, which everyone really looks forward to, is the riot training. Okay, that's where the police uh, get dressed up in full riot gear and we as students and uh, even the staff get involved and they come on with a a shopping trolley full of bricks and we get to throw the bricks at the police and don't get into any trouble for it which is absolutely fantastic okay another one that we do we look at is say is the fire station okay we'll get a trip to a local fire station to see um some of the on-site um work that they do uh, look at life as a firefighter and um, we get to walk around the local fire station and see all the equipment all the different things that they get to use and basically the day-to-day -day running uh, of, of a fire station We'll also go and look at um, an RAF base. Okay, generally the last one we went to was RAF Cosford. Okay, and we get a walkthrough, talk through of everything that you can expect to see on an RAF camp, looking at the different roles. Uh, some of the students were fortunate enough to sit into a um, into a fighter jet. Okay, and we have loads of opportunities to take photographs. And we even actually get to speak to some real life soldiers that will actually tell you the honest truth about what the expectations, what, what it's like to be in the, in the RAF, which was good. Okay, and um, the one that everyone looks forward to, I think, at the end of the course, towards the end of the year, is the trip that we go to, which is uh, in Swinnerton. Okay, that is an army camp, and that is a week in the life of basic training. Okay, it does sound a little bit scary. It is quite disciplined, but it's a really good course to go on. Okay, what to expect? Um, sort of things we'd be getting up at half six to have a room inspection. Uh, you'd be doing fitness wise. You'd be doing loads of different tasks loads of different scenarios you go on the obstacle course you'll get to fire in the uh, in the shooting range and um, and also you know you'll, you'll look at life and how what what the army have to offer and all the different jobs okay moving on to the guest speakers okay last year we were fortunate to have a load of different guest speakers and they're all available to come in again this year which i'm looking forward to and that varied from um, an army combat medic, okay, who was a young lady who decided that she wanted to go into the infantry and chose the route of going through army combat medic training. Okay, I've actually been in contact with her during the lockdown and she's actually working in one of the hospitals now, offering her expertise to help uh, on the front line. Okay, another person we'll have coming in is um, from prison. Okay, I was fortunate enough to teach this young man uh, a couple of years back uh, and he's now working in a prison. So it's quite good to, to have someone who's quite young to come in to tell you all of the things that, you know, he potentially faced as being a young prison officer, especially in this day and age. Uh, we have people from the fire service coming in and talking about the fire service. I know one of the things that me and Sadie did last year was we organised a trip to go to uh, UCLan and we went down to have a look at the fire service degree that they were offering, Okay, which is really good and we'll probably do exactly the same again this year. Okay, we have the Home Office coming in, okay, to talk about all the different jobs and stuff in the Home Office. Um, and basically, we, 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 we'll just give you a load of information and trips and enrichment activities to, to sort of um, to make a judgment of what uniform services that best suit your interests. Okay, one thing I would say, though, is with the uniform services is that we do, because of the name of it, uniform services, we do um, expect to wear wear a uniform which is quite similar to the uniform that i've got on which is a, a polo shirt a pair of black combat uh, and a pair of uh, walking boots the reason why we we've picked the walking boots and not just army boots is that they that it's a double um you know double thing that you can use with them okay because one of the units that you will do on the BTEC is outdoor and adventurous activity uh, and we can use these boots when we're walking around and getting muddy in the hills and as long as you keep them clean for the next time you'll have no issues um, 
One other thing that I just want to want to briefly touch on is the uh, Duke of Edinburgh. Okay, this is something that we offer to all of the students on the public services. Uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award is a fantastic award, especially when you're applying for jobs. It looks really, really good when you have it on your CV. Okay, the the, the employer, the organisation, whatever it is, looks at it and sees that you've got D of E on your uh, CV, and they see that that you're one of these people that can start something and finish it and overcome many obstacles or any challenges that you might face along the way. Okay, the, the, the DV that we run is uh, bronze, which is a year long, silver, which is a year long, and the gold award. Now that gold award is generally offered to the BTEC um, level three students because it's a two year qualification. That's not saying that you can't do it if you start level one, it's a progression. So eventually when you go onto the BTEC level two, you can jump straight onto it. Um, when you've passed it, it's a day out to Buckingham Palace uh, where you'll get given your award, and that's a fantastic day. So we look forward to it. Just quickly, I just obviously something that Sadie and I are both um, quite um, fortunate to have is the fact that we had a student who was with us um, last year, Sonia Lapona. I'll pass you back over to Sadie, and Sadie can just talk to you briefly about how Sonia came to us and where it is that she is now. Sadie. Thanks, Dee. I just wanted to reiterate to, to everyone, because so often at enrolment, people come up to us and say, I didn't get the GCSEs I wanted, but I'm desperate to go on the level three. What can you do for me? Um, it doesn't matter what you how you do on your GCSEs. Obviously, things are a little bit different this year. Come to us at enrolment anyway, because we can always offer you something. There is something for everyone in public services. Sonia was a young lady who came to this country from Greece um, in her teens. Um, her English was not... Um, particularly fluent. She joined um, Hubert College as an ESOL student, which means she, she came to improve upon her English um, as an overseas young lady. And then she joined um, the Uniform Services Department on the level one, preparing to serve in the military, which progressed back then to the level two around Christmas time. Um, she then um, joined the um, NCFE level three course, which was just one academic step up. Um, and then finally um, fulfilled her dream going on to the BTEC level three, which was a very good academic level for her, where she absolutely excelled. Um, she ended up with a triple distinction and she's en she is now studying criminology. I think she's in her second year at Liverpool Hope, Liverpool Hope University, uh, where she is thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and we, we, we had hoped to have her, but she was unable to make it. But she um, she was a student counsellor as well while she was at um, Hugh Baird and she just threw herself into absolutely every challenge we gave her. And she was she's just a, a wonderful success story. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, just to encourage you. And there's something for everyone. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you, Steve. Now, in addition to our extensive FE offer, we also have a, a, a fantastic HE provision. So I'd like to now introduce um, Tricia, who's one of our tutors in HE. Hello again. Um, so as Carl said, I'm one of the tutors. I'm also course lead for um, our Criminology Foundation degree and BA Honours. Um, we run that on behalf of the University of Central Lancashire and it runs as a two-year and a one-year um, study course. Okay, so you do your foundation degree over two years and then you top up to get your full BA honours for the final year. We'll also be doing um, a foundation degree and an entry foundation degree in police and studies that should be going live for applications in the next week or so um, and then you'll find out more information about that on the website. Um, there are avenues you can come into the studying and um, you don't have to have GCSEs, you can also come on board with functional skills level two. You do for the foundation degrees have to have a level three qualification though, but it does not have to be subject specific. Okay, so that's really important. So don't worry if you've never done anything criminology based before. Okay. Um you will be studying for up to 14 hours a week with your tutors. There are three tutors that you'll see and we run three modules in the first semester and three modules in the second semester. Um, the modules vary from year to year, but you will do research methods. You'll look at some legal systems, policing, um, criminal justice, process and procedures, um, controversialism in prison, which is quite a big one at the moment, um, and interpersonal violence, which again is quite big at the moment um, under the current situation. 
Um, on top of that, we will be doing visits out, kind of situation dependent at the moment, to um, the Crown Courts, Magistrates Courts, um, the Police Training College over in Wallasey. We visit there for um, kind of a day out um, and do different scenarios. Um, you'll be in university for two and a half days a week at most. However, we're currently planning for a blended learning um, situation for September that could change depending on the government's decision over education. Um, but the way that will work is you will split your time between online sessions and being actually in the university centre, which is where your classes will be held. Um, all your staff are qualified um, within the field of criminology. We also have a lot of guest speakers coming from the police, um, from the criminal justice system as well. Doing a degree in criminology opens up a, a plethora of um, of work avenues, a career avenue, sorry, um, and that goes from the criminal justice system, um, probation service, youth work, you can go into court, obviously not as a judge or, um, or a barrister, you need to do a, a law degree for that. Um, you could also just go into studying the causes of crime within the local area or any area that you chose. So there's a lot of avenues for you to do. And there's further studies you can do as well. So you can mix criminology with a lot of different fields. So you could go on and do a master's in um, forensic psychology, criminal psychology, um, sociology. So it just opens up a lot of avenues for yourself. Um, we also have the opportunity for the Hubert University Centre bursary gift, which is £500, which is split over two years. OK, and you get £250 in your first year. And that's followed by £250 in your second year. And um, there are T's and C's attached to that. Attendance is a big, um, a big one of those. Um, your class sizes generally are no more than 25 in a class. Obviously, again, due to the current situation, you may find your classes are going to be smaller. So we can allow for social distancing within your classroom. Um, you still have access to the pods, as we discussed um, by the FE team. So they're still there for all of our HE students as well. So the counsellors, the, the health and wellbeing services, financial, um, the student finance support is there as well. Um, for our foundation degrees, you do need to apply for student finance. You can do that by going to Student Finance England um, and selecting the course that you want to do and get the ball rolling for that. You can apply for student finance before you get given your offer as well. Um, it depends on which way around you want to do your um, finance. Um, I think that's all from me. I probably forgot something. But um, if there's any questions, um, then do just pop me an email. Um, or So go through the inquiries and just ask them to direct it to myself. Um, so that's... Um, all, of the, all of us covered for our information. So I'm going to open it up to... Um, Q&A. So hit us with whatever you've got. Okay, um, a question for Sadie. David asks, I don't think I'm going to get great maths and English GCSE results. Will I be able to join a course? Yes, 100%. Um, we have many students that come to us that, that don't have great maths and English um, and you'll you, you'll you'll do re, you'll redo your maths and English while you're with us. That'll be part of your timetable. So, yeah, 100 percent. Come along we'll, and we will find whether it's um, we'll, we'll look at the other stuff that you're that you've done while you're at school. We'll look at your areas of interest. We'll look at whether you're how soon you'll be looking to join um, whichever. Um, uniform service it is you want to join and we'll 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 place you on whether it's level one two or three so yeah definitely get in touch thank you okay I've got a question off Gary he asks um, I'm a mature student can I apply and is there funding available yes you can so we do have students um, up to the 50s really maybe I think we might have even had some a little bit older um, so that is open to everybody. You don't necessarily have to have used traditional routes and you can come from a different career. You can still get student finance. So student finance is open for, um, for funding as well. Okay, so there's one uh, question for me. I thought I was being left out, but here we go. Uh, Amy asks, 
Uh, what links with forces do you have? Okay, we have absolutely fantastic links with all forces, i.e. Uh, the fire service, the police, the prison services. Okay, whatever uniform services you are looking at going into, even if it's something that we don't have, then I will certainly make inquiries and get a new guest speaker to come in uh, because that's how we've done it in the past that we've got uh, a student that come to us uh, and wants to join the uh, you know the border force that's how we got to bring in the home office okay and it's a new thing now that we just keep adding to our um, our list of guest speakers so yeah we've got really fantastic links with all uniform services thanks for the question okay so another question for me so izzy asks what can i do once i finish the course so you could go on to another university and study for a master's qualification um again the um criminology degree opens up the amount of subjects that you can go on to study um in the future but you could also go into a direct career within probation the court service um youth justice oh there's there's so many um potentially social work um research you could become a research fellow within the field of criminology you could work for the government so yeah there's there's a lot of um, of avenues for you to take okay another question for me from ant he asks i am a mature student can i join a college course yes 100 percent and what we usually do um is we have had mature students um older than 20 21 on our level three in, in uniform services however um we you we do usually ask ask um again we'll take a look at what your career um aspirations are and for many mature students it we will be looking at you you um getting on to the foundation degree we look at what sort of courses you need to do to top up to ensure you're ready for that level i don't know whether trish could ask, add to that actually um for mature students um Sorry, run that past me again. Sorry. So which, uh, which yeah, specific uh, aspect? We often get mature students with lots of life experience and, and it's often a level three is not really appropriate for them because they, they don't, we've, we have found in the past, it doesn't usually sit that right for them to be with um, in a class full of young people if they have lots and lots of life experience. So what we tend to do is try and get them topped up so they're ready for foundation degree. Okay, so some of our degrees at the University Centre offer a year, um, year zero entry year, whereby you don't need to have a level three qualification. Um, so our policing studies will offer that. It's potential um, for other um, courses. I do know our health and social care offer it. Um, and one of the business courses offer it as well, but I couldn't tell you which one. Um, but we definitely do offer um, that avenue for more mature students that maybe don't have the level three qualification. Okay, so uh, thanks. Another question for me. Emma asks, how easy is it to get a job in the forces at the end of the course? Okay, Our, um, the journey that you take from when you start in the public services to when you leave, it's about preparing you for uh, you going to, to join your specific course. Okay, so on some of the units that we go across, okay, it looks at the application processes, it looks at the entry requirements it looks at the fitness requirements so all of our focus is about getting you to be in, in the best position that you could possibly be to apply for your chosen career okay okay another one for me i've never been so popular um aaron asks how many days will i be in so officially you'll be in for a maximum of two and a half days a week um as i said earlier due to the current situation the current climate the way we're planning for that at the moment is for half of your time um, roughly to be online. So you'll join via, um, similar to this, so you'll join us via a live um, video link in the classroom and half your time will be in the classroom with your tutor face to face for that extra support. Thank you. A uh, question for me, James asks, will I go on work placement? Yes, yes, you will. Um, it varies over the years. Um, we've had people doing um, stewarding at Comic-Con. We've had people going to the MOD and doing administrative work. We've had people volunteering on the front line in, in charitable organizations. Um, again we do our our week a year in uh, sorry a year that'd be a bit harsh a week in the life of a soldier at swinerton where you'll get um put through your paces um regardless really of whether you 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 um uh, desire to be in in the army or not um everybody finds that to be thoroughly enjoyable so yeah you will go on work placement um 
but uh, what that will look like in the in the current COVID um, climate, I'm not too sure. But but we're going to prepare you for work. You will do a placement. Okay. Right. I'd just like to say thank you for uh, to everyone for joining us today. Don't forget that applications for September are still open, and you can apply online via our website. If you have any further questions or queries, please get in touch with us via our website or social media. And Please stay safe and we hope to see you soon. See you later. Bye, everyone.